who's still burning coal? Let's talk about the shocking truth about global coal production. I'm going to start with a really wild stat that might blow you away. That the world's coal industry was a pie, and we were sitting around at Thanksgiving about to eat pie. China's eating more than half of it. That's right. China alone produces over 51% of all the coal on earth. Imagine sitting at Thanksgiving dinner and realizing that Uncle China just grabbed five slices before anyone else even picked up a fork. Meanwhile, much of the rest of the world, particularly in places like the U.S. and Europe, were awkwardly passing around crumbs, pretending that we're transitioning to green energy. But the truth is that while a lot of countries are talking about go going green, Asia is quietly keeping the lights on with good old-fashioned coal, and the numbers are jaw-dropping. I'm not trying to make a moral judgment here on whether or not they should or shouldn't be using coal. I'm just trying to point it out. If we talk about the coal kings, we could set the stage by saying global coal production in 2024 hit about 9.2 billion tons. That's billion with a B. That's enough coal to fill more than 1.2 million Olympic swimming pools. In China, even though they'll talk about how their percentage of coal use declines as they implement other types of energy, they continue to use more coal than the rest of the world combined. After China comes India, producing over a billion tons, about 11.7% of the world's total. And you can look at the fact that nations like India are using coal predominantly for power supply. So as more and more of these countries um, get into the middle class and so on, they need more electricity and they're using coal. Indonesia comes in third with 836 million tons, 9% of global output. Together, those three countries, all of them in Asia, control nearly three quarters of the world's coal production. If coal were a restaurant, it'd be like the Asian trio getting all the business while the rest of the world snacks on wind farms and solar panels. So if we want to talk about regions of the world, the Asia Pacific region now accounts for a staggering 80% of all coal production. You compare that to North America, that's using 5.5%, Europe, barely 4.5%, Africa, only 2.9%, which is mainly South Africa, mined 235 million tons this year. I mean, the Middle East, if you're wondering about that with all the oil in the Middle East, they produce just 0.1% of the world's coal. That's kind of like a sneeze in the global total. And countries like Germany and the U.S. that used to be coal powerhouses are quietly backing away. The U.S. dropped about 12% in production last year, down to 465 million tons. Germany's down 10%. Greece is down a whopping 39%. They're burning through their coal phase out faster than their summer vacations in Greece, right? But not everyone's slowing down. Some nations are actually revving up with the coal engines, like Mongolia produced 28% more coal this year than last year. That's like a high school freshman suddenly benching 300 pounds. That's a huge increase, right? And same thing with India and Indonesia, which are huge countries. I mean, India now has a higher population than China. Both of them are around 7% annual growth. So for context, the global average growth rate for coal was less than 1%, but the use of coal is growing. It's less than 1%. But why the surge in certain countries? It's energy demand. As millions of people move into the middle class across Asia, electricity consumption is skyrocketing, and coal, despite its dirty image, remains the cheapest, by far, most reliable option for energy. Mongolia's boom also comes from exports, mostly to its neighbor China. Think of it like a small-town bakery selling all its cookies to a massive customer down the street. So while Western nations are putting their coal mines on life support, Canada down 13%, Colombia down 22%, the U.S. down 12%. Here's coal, you know, once powered America's industrial might, our steel, our railroads, the rise of the Rust Belt, and now it's more like the rotary phone of the energy world. It was once essential, and now it's nostalgic in certain parts of the world. While U.S. production is falling, we still export millions of tons, often to the very Asian nations driving up global demand. It's kind of like saying, we don't smoke anymore, but we sell cartons of cigarettes overseas. Again, I'm not trying to ask the question, should we be doing that or should we not? I'm just pointing out the facts. So what does all this mean? Globally, coal is not dying, it's shifting. The center of gravity has moved east to Asia. So even as in the West, we like to celebrate our wind farms and our solar panels, countries like China and India still see coal as the backbone of affordable growth. Yes, renewables are rising fast, but coal remains the world's security blanket. When demand spikes, the power grid strain, coal is sort of the reliable friend that no one wants to admit that they still call at two in the morning to come and get the job done. The irony is that Western nations are debating carbon credits and Asian factories are cranking out solar panels and batteries to make these green dreams possible. And those factories are using coal to produce the batteries and the solar panels. 
So the next time you hear someone say that coal is dead, remember this, it's not dead, it just moved to Asia. It bought a bigger house and it started working overtime. The coal story isn't just about black rocks that we call coal, it's about human demand, economic growth, and global priorities. And as long as the world keeps needing cheap, reliable energy, coal's not going anywhere anytime soon. And we can complain about that, but probably China and India and Indonesia would say, hey, you guys used coal to get your start. Why are you blaming us for using it? So I don't know. What do you think? Uh, leave your comments below. If you want to see more content like this, let me know. Feel free to subscribe to my channel.